All right, guys, let's get started with our chapter 17 and 19 review videos. First things first, remember how we study, right? We're going to watch the review video on our own. Copy down the things I have to say. We're going to search for answers in our PowerPoints because you guys always know those are our foundations. I'm actually going to direct you in some cases, excuse me, to the text because some things I do have a little bit more embedded to the text. Talk about documents, things like that. Then you're going to call up your study buddy because you don't do a push by yourself, right? We don't do a push by ourselves. We work as a family. You're going to compare notes and see, well, what did you get? What did you know? What did you get? And, and kind of come to a consensus on some things. And then you're going to put yourself in a, test, a testing situation. So make sure um, that you're preparing accordingly. Also, chapter 19 key terms are on the test. Okay. Tomorrow we're going to do stations because we will finish the lecture today. And we're just going to dig or dig deep into um, primary documents that are always present on the AP exam, things that you're you're going to see and that I want to expose you all to, um, and also things that are going to help you with the test. All right, so if you're ready, let's get started. The test is open. It's right here on my other screen. Um, the uh, test starts off really with looking at Andrew Carnegie. Remember, he's your steel manufacturer. And in the beginning of Chapter 17, I have a couple of slides about who he is um, and how he perceives the Gilded Age to be, because remember, we're dipping things in gold. And he definitely has more of a, po a positive outlook on the Gilded Age. So you have a test question right off the gate with him. And then in the reading, we get into Homestead. We get into the Homestead lockout, right? So you have a question about um, what that was. It's, it's kind of like a key, key termy question. So make sure you know what Homestead, Pennsylvania Homestead lockout is. Um, you have questions about other uh, big titans of industry like Gustavus Swift, he's your beef guy. John D. Rockefeller, he's Standard Oil and Carnegie. Go into the, the, the PowerPoint, find out what they have in common with one another, especially when it comes to things like vertical and horizontal integration. Um, you have a question about women in industry. Who is working? Who isn't working? What are they likely to do? What are they, some of them doing? So make sure you understand facets of women. You have a question on kind of the technicalities of how big business and mass production is working, right? So go into the slides, make sure you understand the descaling aspect, um, how we generate additional workers output, the scientific management and the management revolution. And you're going to have a question that ties itself into a phrase about how these things are working to generate more output. Okay, make sure you know those things. It's very key termy. So if you know how they're working together to generate more output, you're going to be good. You have questions about working class families and what they are doing in the factories. And remember I said working class families. So that might not necessarily mean just the dads going to work. You might see a presence of women and children in the workforce in that question. You have a question about sojourners and I put sojourners in the PowerPoint. Make sure you find it and just kind of analyze what their original intent is in coming over versus what they end up doing. You have a question about Chinese Exclusion Act, kind of a key termy question, but definitely make sure you know what the Chinese exclusion is because that's a very important. You have a question about the Hatch Act. Make sure you know the Hatch Act. We have to know the difference between the Knights of Labor and the AFL. You have to know Munn versus Illinois and the case that reverses Munn versus Illinois and what the conclusion is like what's created because of that process and know the cases because that's another question. Make sure you know what's going on here, like what they're about. You have closed shop, yellow dog contract, collective bargaining and trade union. Okay. So all four of these things are present. Only one has a correct definition. So you have to know all four in order to pick them. And the other ones are going to help you tremendously. You have a question about what the middle class is doing. So we're kind of now shifting a little bit into chapter 19. The middle class, they're different. They're not laborers. Where are they in the corporate world? Like, where would we put them? Where are they living? Um, what are they upset with? 
So you have three separate questions about the middle class and you have to address all three of those things. Uh, I have a question on skyscrapers. Just that's not hard. Don't get that wrong. Hmm. You have a question about African-Americans moving to the cities. And this is a really, really interesting question because remember, majority of the population is still in the deep south. But you really need to make sure we understand what African-Americans are enduring. That's definitely in Chapter 19. We even have a French publication discussing what's happening in the states, especially in the northern cities. So make sure you understand that question about tenements. You have a question about Teddy Roosevelt and how he views muckrakers. That's in the reading. I don't, I might have mentioned it in the lecture for sure. It might not be on the PowerPoint, but that is definitely in the reading when you get to muckrakers and how he perceived them. So you got to go there to find it. It's really not hard. Um, you have a question about immigrants in the era of political machines, right? What are political machines offering immigrants and what are immigrants, you know, providing in return? So there's just like an, a mutual kind of agreement that's going on and it's kind of sketchy right? It's not, there's an avenue that you have to work with. So make sure you guys understand that, that relationship and how you're connected between your, your boss man, the alderman and the immigrant and how things are being exchanged. Um, I want to know what led to the downturn of political machines in the 1890s. You have a question on Jane Adams. Make sure you know what she's doing. You have a question on Margaret Sanger. And what every girl should know that's in the slide it's it's more elaborate in the reading and like i said we're going to touch base with her again in chapter 18 so we're just just now being introduced to her um you have a question about the pure food and drug act the triangle shirt waste factory you have a question on that as well and then you have the last set of questions are a couple of excerpts um and one excerpt is really discussing what's more important in the grand scheme of things. Is it capital or is it labor? So here's like this big debate on, is it the entrepreneurs that are taking the risk and bringing things together? Or is it the laborers who are more important? And in the end, the answer is yes, it's both. Laborers deserve to be treated well, better working hours, better working conditions, better wages. At the same time, we have to recognize that jobs wouldn't exist and mass production or anything wouldn't exist if people wouldn't be out there taking risks. So we're trying to find ourselves in this happy medium but also let's not forget the statistics in the era of the gilded, gilded age you got this 95 five right you have five percent of the population that owns 95 percent of the wealth and you have 95 percent of the population right that's sharing five percent of the wealth everyone's standard of living is going up everything's great we're, we're living in a, in a higher standard of living than in any previous generation but again it's the gilded age that sounds great everything's amazing we've got more things than we could ever have dreamed of but let's look at our tenements. Let's look, let's look at our living conditions. Let's look at labor conditions, right? Let's look at um, rights of African-Americans, Chinese-Americans, women, child labor. We have work. The progressive era does need to come in. And that whole paragraph is about those things. And then you have another passage about political machines, most specifically um, this is a secondary source and it's talking about the Democratic Party. Most of the political machines were run by the Democratic Party. In this case, they were helping out Irish Americans. And this, I believe, is in the city of New York. Yes, this is in the city of New York. So the questions are really stemming and coming right from the passage. Um, again, making sure we understand the relationship that your your aldermen or your ward bosses had in connection in this mutual agreement between political machines. And political machines are going to be important. They're going to be a lot of them the first to generate these civic, or I'm sorry, civil engineering projects to bring clean water, right? And that's important to, you know, develop our sewage systems, to build bridges, to do a lot of public works. There's a lot of public works programs that are going in. After the depression, we're finding ourselves where we need urban political reformers to come in to really fix what's broken with the political machines. Because in the end, they're, they're definitely selfish. They're definitely taking advantage of immigrants um, and then in that case, you get people like Jane Adams coming in and fighting on their behalf. So again, we're in the Gilded Age. Lots of great things are happening, but we do need a call of order in some cases to kind of not really rectify situations, but to iron them out, to use the system as best we can to make them just, you know, make America 
what it can be. All right. Don't forget, chapter 19 key terms are also on your test. And that is it, y'all. Have fun studying.